Hi everyone, welcome back to The Nature Patch. My name is Robin and thank you so much for joining in on another video. Today I really wanted to do a full garden update which includes all of the different gardens that I've been creating uh, over the past few months. A lot has changed in the garden space and I really wanted to uh, film a video to document all of those changes. I also just wanted to do a quick hello to all of the new subscribers that have come over in the past couple of weeks. I make videos all about gardening and how to connect to your natural surroundings and bring nature's principles into the garden. So if you're new here I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and give the video a like. It does really help to grow this channel and share all of this gardening knowledge and also allows me to jump on the magical algorithm of YouTube as well so we can connect and share more gardening knowledge. So I'm in one of the back gardens right now. There are lots of lorikeets around because currently in the bush a lot of the eucalypt trees are flowering. So they're putting on this massive show of fluffy white and yellow eucalypt flowers which the lorikeets are loving right now and getting slightly drunk off the older flowers. <laughs> so they're very happy in the trees at the moment. Behind me here is one of the first garden spaces. Here is a little bit of a pan of it. It is on a slight slope so I do have kind of a bit more defined raised garden beds um, and pathways in between which act as swales. So we'll start over here and work our way up. This is probably my favorite feature of the garden at the moment. Wow, these orchids are insane. This is probably one of my favorite features of the garden right now, which is this big um, bean arch that we've got going. We have a mixture of scarlet runner beans on this side here um, and some green beans on the other side, both very, very similar in terms of foliage. Um, the Scarlet Runners have a really, really bright red flowers. These are a little late on flowering compared to um, the other green beans that we have, which have already started flowering and producing some fruit as well. And then next to the beans, we have uh, quite a lot of leeks that I've put in here. Some of them I have multi-sowed, so I've got multiple leeks in one hole and then others are just singular. Moving up here, I've created a little bit of a pea trellis um, to kind of define the end of the bed here where I've got some snow peas growing. Um, these are the mammoth snow peas, I think. So they will fill up this whole trellis here and um, hopefully provide us with a lot of snow peas. This next bed has been a journey. Um, so continuing on sharing how the garlic is going. And I'm happy to say that it is growing super well. I have been fertilizing it once a week either with some worm tea solution, which is just diluted worm tea, or I've been using dynamic lifter, which is basically chicken poo. Um, so that's the pellets that you can see on the garlic at the moment. I just put this on the other day. So the smell is very pungent, but um, I don't particularly mind it. The elephant garlic is the first ones here, which are a lot larger than the Glen Large garlic that I have here. So they're all growing pretty well. There is some slight yellowing uh, going on with the leaves. I was putting that down to a little bit of nitrogen deficiency. Again, this soil is really, really poor. And we're in the process of building up the soil each time we plant something, we put some compost or mulch on the top. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then behind there, we have a row of some radishes that I was using as more of a green manure crop that I'll um, kind of cut back and just lay over as mulch. Um, some lettuce that we have been devouring for sandwiches as well as some gorgeous Californian wonder capsicums. This one I might pick in a few days just because it's weighing down the whole plant here, you can see. Um, so I don't really want this touching the ground too much. It's very heavy. So um, I think I might cut this soon and another little one on here as well. And then we have another chili plant here that has got an abundance of little chilies on it and lots more new flowers coming. These chilies here, I'm not too sure what these chilies are called, but they are mighty hot. So <laughs> we're actually gonna make some chili oil from this um, just because these just are so hot in the meals and, and we're not particularly spice lovers. So <laughs> that um, chili oil, I do really like using in dishes. So as the weeks have gone on in this garden, the soil has definitely improved bit by bit. Um, and one of the things that has helped with that is actually kind of surrounding a lot of the garden with green mulch so that I can just chop whenever I need some mulch and drop it around the plant. So I've been using pigeon pea for this method. 
and I also did have quite a few okra that were just kind of falling over um, and that, that I'm now saving the seeds for and I did also cut a lot of that okra back and use that as a mulch as well. So I've done that down here up at the back wall with the pawpaws where I've just kind of yeah mulched around it with all of the okra and cut it up into small bits and that just really ensures that I'm not wasting any of the foliage or the nutrients that have been created in this bed i'm returning it back to the soil uh, for more plants to grow rather than kind of taking it out of this system that i have here into another one and then the last row here that i have is my tomatoes which are coming to their life's end we have quite a few of the thai pink egg varieties still left here a few little cosmos that are holding on and you can see some more cherry tomatoes in there so that's pretty much what this row is the few capsicums as well and then the last little patch over here is a mixture of basil that is coming to its end sage um, eggplants i've got my compost bin here some thai basil that i just recently cut back and you can see just you know basil absolutely loves a haircut so i always like chopping basil back and up here is some lagos spinach which has some beautiful flowers at the moment. Some more pawpaws, pepino melon down here. I've tried to do some oregano and flowers um, up the front um, and a geranium as well, just to uh, ward off some of the um, bugs that I don't want in this garden. <laughs> so this back row here um, is quite perennial. I have a lot of plants that are just going to stay here. And mainly because this is the top bed of this slope and I really want to stabilize all of the soil and the materials that are up on this side of the bed rather than a lot of that material washing down um, and you can do that by heavily planting plants in an area. One of the cats is now terrorizing birds so I've got to go deal with that. What were you doing little man? Do you want to come and help? you want to come and help? Got a little helper now. I'm not sure if I did mention or not, but in my videos, I always like to have a cup of tea or coffee. Today I'm drinking a strawberry gum green tea, I think. Absolutely delicious. If you've never tried strawberry gum in a tea, I would highly recommend it. This tea was a birthday present from one of my dear friends and um, I'm definitely gonna be buying it again. So I'm walking over now. Um, I was walking over from the beanstalk is over there um, and then I'm going to turn you around slowly and behind me here is where we have our other massive garden space and also have the pumpkin vine that has just been continuing to grow and grow and grow and grow. So the people that live here are redoing the kind of grass area behind me but I have persuaded to uh, put some different fruit trees in um, this area which some of them are behind me. I'm gonna do a fruit tree slash tree tour a little bit later because I've got some more to plant. I'll just keep it to the veggie gardens at the moment. So behind me here is the garden that Scott and I put together in one of my previous videos. Um, we've still got a few garden beds to do down the very end, but majority of them are kind of defined and mostly planted. Still got a little bit more to plant though. This is a little bit of an overview of what it looks like now. I'll run through this fairly quickly, but in the first bed here, we have a big patch of the Glen Large garlic and um, a calendula patch here that I'm going to be making my calendula salve with um, and some cornflower and stock flowers up the back. Next here, we have a row of cos lettuce that I really need to come through and thin. And then we've got two rows of leeks here and some rocket and radishes on the other side. Also a massive pile for winter wood, <laughs> which is probably going to be a serious workout for Scott and I. So, so please think of us while we uh, deal with that. <laughs> I'm really excited though to keep using the fire inside because I'm going to be making some biochar soon um, and sharing, sharing with you how I'm going to be making that and also what I do with all of the pot ash as well. I do have a video sharing what you can do with the ash from your fire, but I'm actually yet to make kind of a big batch of biochar. So 
I'm very excited about that. And this pile behind me is absolutely gonna help with that. <laughs> okay, so the next bed here is actually all bare. This is where we're gonna be planting uh, greens and broccoli. And, but up the back, we do have two little nasturtiums planted in there because I love nasturtiums. Definitely gonna make some nasturtium jelly with those. Down here, we have some beetroots growing and then the bed over. We have a mixture of things. I've got some rows of carrots here, uh, greens, broccoli, corn salad, uh, and then some more greens up the back. Got some uh, mixture of lettuce and spinach. So I'm going to come and thin all of these pretty soon when I get some spare time. <laughs> so, and behind me here, we recently got an order for some potatoes. So they're sitting in the office now um, and I'm just letting them sprout a little bit. So I'm gonna be working through some organic matter um, to the bottom area here. And that's where I'm gonna try growing potatoes for the first time. So, so fingers crossed they go okay. I've never really grown um, a large amount of potatoes before, so we'll see. Definitely need a tea break. So I've got the garden here, and then behind me we have this little platform here. Um, and this is where we've got the compost bins. And I'm thinking of bringing some pots down here. I don't know, maybe some blueberry plants um, or some other um, dwarf citrus and make this a nice seating area, I think. I'm gonna go up and put some mosquito repellent on before I continue this because I'm getting eaten alive right now. <laughs> Just really doesn't get cold enough in Southeast Queensland to not have to put repellent on all year. Uh, if anyone does know of any kind of natural insect repellent, I would love to know. We go through Aerogard here like there is no tomorrow. Have done all of my life um, working and living in North Queensland. It's kind of a must. And I have had something very similar to dengue fever that I absolutely never want to catch ever again from mosquitoes. <laughs> All right, so to give a bit of perspective, I just came up from this area here. Uh, the veggie patch is down here. I'm gonna take you into the pool area now. Shadow's obviously just leading the way, gonna show you everything. Doesn't actually care about me. Um, Behind shadow, I've got all of my herbs. I've got lots of parsley, lemon balm, and chives, which we pretty much use on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of these, so that's why I like to have it really close to the house. As well as that, we use greens a lot. So you know me, I love to put them in smoothies. Um, so I've got some kale growing here and some collards as well. Just a little patch so I can kind of come and grab like one or two leaves every now and again um, and then also some Egyptian spinach in there absolutely not shallow we're gonna back up back it up back it up which is also really really nice in um, smoothies got some plants here the blueberry bush definitely needs a trim back and then the last few beds that I'll share with you I'm not gonna lie a little bit embarrassing <laughs> um, I really just don't take care of this area as much as I should so it's probably going to be a job for this weekend to figure this one out. I need to pull out the cucumbers here because they just have so much mildew on them. They don't really get a lot of sun and it's just kind of too damp and cold down here so originally I had the beautiful optimistic stunning idea of them trailing up these little teepees that I had made but alas is not working so <laughs> Uh, we're going to think of something else to plant in there. And uh, another kind of epic fail, although not really because it's producing fruit. Uh, we have a few tomato bushes that are seriously on a slant. And um, yeah, I've just kind of let this bed go, obviously, and not really worried about it. Uh, but there is quite a bit of fruit on here. And uh, these cherry tomatoes are so, so delicious. So I'm happy that I still have some fruit. There's also a random capsicum in there too. Um, and then we've just got some basil that I come and use for dinners and um, some more Thai pink egg tomatoes here. So I think my plan for this is just to plant some more greens in these. I do have another bed down here that also doesn't have much in it. The idea of having a lot of these greens really close to me, close to the house, behind me there, 
so I can just come out um, and dodge all of the carpet pythons that are around here because <laughs> there's a massive one around and uh, yeah come and grab some for dinner when there's not snakes around so I want a lot of greens really close to me so I don't have to walk all the way down to the other garden bed which is really not that far but when you're in your pajamas and slippers it's a little bit much so that is pretty much it for what the garden is looking like in May May is my favorite month of the year because it really starts to get a little chilly I can bring out all of the comfy jumpers that I have and we can put the fire on as well and in terms of the garden it's just a chance to take a step back um, and slow down a little bit rather than rather than slogging through all of the hot weather um, and actually just really enjoy the garden which is something I have made sure to do this month as well so I really hope you enjoyed this video make sure to give the video a like again it really does help support me um, and I have a few other links in the description box if you would like to support this channel as well it takes so long to film and edit videos so it really means the world to me uh, when I do get some feedback about them and any support that you do give as well so I'm gonna go find the cat head inside enjoy my cup of tea um, and just have a cozy evening thank you so much for watching this video and until my next one happy gardening everyone bye